Hi everyone, it's Rick here from The Game Creators. I found some time to do another tutorial on 3D. Uh, this one's going to start showing you some new commands and talking about uh, the camera and things like that. So let's, uh, without further ado, have a look at this particular demo. So as usual we've got the uh, setup commands here. You should pretty much know what all those do by now. And under this line we get into the 3D side of things. So we're loading an image into a texture and then, like we did in the previous demo, we're creating a cube with create object box, size 10 in the X, 10 in the Y, and 10 in the Z. Then we're assigning the image that we loaded onto that cube. We've set object image. And then we've got this command here, rotate object local Y. And what that's going to do is going to rotate the box uh, just so we can see more of its sides. So that rotates it in the Y axis. So imagine a, a pencil going right through the cube, through the top of the cube, and then spinning it around that pencil. So rotate it by 25 degrees. Then we're using set ambient color. This just sets ambience of the scene uh, with 222, so it's RGB. Uh, you can actually have a negative value there. So that just makes the scene a bit darker. So when we turn the lights on later on in the code, the thing will look a bit more dramatic. This next bit of code um, adds a virtual button, uh, well, three virtual buttons, so that we can turn uh, a red light on and a green light on and a blue light on. So those virtual buttons are, are created and positioned. If you don't know how to use virtual buttons, you just press F1 and you can go straight to the command and it will tell you about virtual buttons. But essentially, they're just like um, sprites that you can click on. They're just more handy to set up and you can give them text. Then we have um, one more virtual button and that will be for rotating the cube. We can click on that button and it rotate it. So let's get into the, the main part of 3D. Let's take a look at this command, create point light. It's got a lot of parameters in this command. They're all quite simple to understand. I've listed here what they are. So the four is the light ID. So we're, we're creating a point light, and a point light is just a light in 3D space that emits light around the scene. Okay, this is number four. And we're gonna create the light at this X, Y, Z position, 10, 10, 10. It's going to have a radius of 300 and its colour is going to be white. That's 255, 255, 255, which is the RGB value of the light. I've commented out that for the moment. I need to put that back in. Set camera position. The default camera is camera 1. So when you see a 3D scene, you're looking at it through a camera, if you like. And we're going to set the position of the camera at X, Y, Z position 0, 0, 0. Then we've got our main loop following that. A do loop, as usual. Not very big. So at the start of the main loop, we're going to get the pointer X and the pointer Y position. And why are we doing this? Well, we want to make a light move around the scene based on the position of the mouse pointer. So we GPX hash uh, gets the X and GPY hash gets the y. Then we convert those values, which are just xy values, um, into a, a 3D vector format. A bit tricky, don't want to go into all the detail right now, but that allows us to then position a light down here on this command here, set point light position based on the lx and the ly values uh, there. Anyway, you can play around with those values if you want. Um, but for now, just realise that that's what it's doing. It's taking the XY position of the mouse pointer and allowing you to then move a light around in 3D. So the next thing I do is actually, I want to move the camera position so that I'm further away from the uh, cube. And I keep the X and the Y of the camera at zero, but I move the Z, the camera in the Z minus 20 away from the center of the screen. I also make sure the rotation of the camera is 0, 0, 0. And I print some values here. Um, so I'm just going to run now because I think it's important we explore this. So here's our cube. It's rotating slowly. Um, we've got some code that does that. Here are the values, the GPX. This is the X and the Y position of the mouse pointer. You can see if I 
run across the X, you can see that going up, and then run down, you see the Y going up, okay, and then we're converting these values. Um, if you look at the X, it goes from a sort of minus number to a positive number, and the same for the Y. And you can see as I move around, there's a light being emitted based on that X, Y position. Okay, so the next thing to check is have the buttons been pressed, the virtual buttons that we saw on the screen. If they have been pressed, then we create a point light. For this particular button, number one, it's a red light. So it creates a point light, one, at X, Y, Z position and of 100 radius with the R, the red element of the colour, 255 and the other colour is 0, 0. So that's going to create a red point light at 0, X0, Y30, Z minus 10. Obviously if a button is pressed again then we delete the point light. So we can turn the light on or off and we've got this little flag, red light equals 1, red light equals 0 and that just changes every time uh, the button's pressed. So button press 2 is going to do RG, so it's going to do a green light, yeah. That's the same bit of code, different light though, light number 2, and button 3, virtual button 3, uh, that's going to do RGB, a blue light, and that's creating point light 3. And then we've got a final bit of code here um, that checks another button for rotation, that will rotate the cube in the Y, got the Y there, by a value of 2. So let's rerun and just explore this. So we've got the red button, if we click the red button, a red light comes on, you can see. Turn it off and on, off and on. Same for green, well it does turn red off, green, the green one's over here, blue, the blue one's there. And of course you can mix them, and then you've got a mixture of colours. Then we've got this rotate button, so we click that and we're rotating it in the Y. So imagine a pencil right down the middle, that's what it's doing. So let's have a play around with some of these values. Let's have a look at this rotate button. So the cube spins around from the right to the left. If I change this to a minus value it goes from left to right and of course you can change the speed so let's say just do it 0.5 yeah much slower smoother again you can put the lights on rotate it now there is a slight rotation every turn of the do loop this is this command here rotate object in a local x so we just comment that out the cube is totally static now and will only turn if we click on the rotate. So have a play around with this bit of code and obviously if you change it to a Y or a Z, let me do a capital Z, then it will rotate differently. So yeah, you see it's going around the Z axis now. Change it to the Y axis. A different rotation and then the x axis and you could do a combination so we copy that do it in the x and the y and the z run that then you're rotating in all those axes and if we change the values, let's do a minus 1 here, let's do a 2 here. You get some interesting effects. So it's worth exploring all these commands, um, even in a very simple way, especially the camera commands, like uh, where we set the camera position. So we go back up to the code where we move the camera here. Let's move it back further. So let's move it back to minus 30. You see, you're further away from the, the cube now. You 
You could even add some buttons to move the camera around or move the camera based on the arrow keys or a joystick. So I hope you've enjoyed this small little demo. It's moved on from just a cube now to a rotating cube with lights in the scene with some camera control. Uh, have a good play around with the project, tweak some values, see what you can make it do and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't already because you'll be kept bang up to date with any new tutorials and videos that we release and please keep enjoying using AppGameKit and see you next time from the world of AppGameKit. Bye!